Okay, does somebody want to please explain to me why there's a sword on the title screen? Uh, I'm gonna figure it's the Master Sword, but I cannot for the life of me figure it out. It might be the Master Sword, but... How, how would I know? It's... it's... Pretty much just the first title in the series, and it, that's like the item that's on like every single title screen that The Legend of Zelda has ever had. But, nevertheless, Caitlin, if you're watching this video, um, it's The Legend of Zelda, the birthday gift. Yep, I'm doing this commentary for a friend, folks. Caitlin Masolini. She's cool peoples. Nevertheless, if you are questioning why the title might say The Legend of Zelda 2, no, 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 don't, t don't take me the wrong way. I'm not gonna troll you and actually play Zelda 2. I, I can't even, I, I, I'll personally say this, I cannot beat that game. I personally cannot beat Zelda 2, not without a guide or some kind of NES slash Famicom long play. But, nevertheless, I'm playing the 2003 version, which, no, was not on the original Nintendo NES, even though, yes, it clearly says 1986 to 2003. I'm figuring, like, the file that I'm using has GC on it, so I'm gonna figure it does, in fact, I mean, it's like a Game Boy remake or something, but, yeah. And I'm doing Second Quest, that's why I'm calling it The Legend of Zelda 2. Makes life easier, you know? It's too dangerous to go alone. Take this! A condom for your enhancement... Whatever the duck it is. <laughs> uh, ducking final <frontal> floss. <laughs> I still have that um, Zelda 1 with lyrics theme stuck in my head. I don't know what was up with me when I was thinking of that song, but good god. Brent Black, you are a genius. <laughs> oh, I hope that's his name. I hope I didn't. I hope I don't have. I don't have. I hope I don't have his name wrong. But nevertheless, I might as well start talking about the game because we're already two minutes and twenty-four seconds in, and I haven't said a thing. Nevertheless, uh, this is the second quest of Legend of Zelda. I was thinking, like you know, since Branch Crash Com's already had Ted deal with the first quest, I thought, why don't I do the second quest on here for Fishes and Giggles? I'm actually going to plan on doing this with as little damage as possible. Uh, whenever I take damage or whatever in my runs, I will reset the game. And trust me, that will be happening a lot of times. However, I jump cut to the part where I um, left off at, so you don't have to worry too much about it. But, you know, it's... It is a bit tedious when you have to die or get hit a lot and have to restart. I don't think I get the blue ring until like way later. I, I haven't even recorded part um, two yet. This is, I only decided to record part one just for this day. Just for June 23, and I'm recording this on June 21, so I am a bit underprepared. <laughs> but I digress. The second quest is actually harder. This, however, was the actual quest that I grew up with. I always, like, whenever I bothered playing The Legend of Zelda, I would never play Quest 1. I would always play Quest 2. And that's always because I thought, like, you know what, since the name of the game is The Legend of Zelda, and since it said, enter your name, I decided to enter Zelda, and I'm like, holy crap, Link has a sword. But, um... For the longest time, I actually did not know that Link was not Zelda. <laughs> yes, I'm one of those people that grew up thinking that Link was Zelda. But then again, you question. That c doesn't make any sense. We don't usually have female protagonists in a storyline. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> um... Yeah, when I found out that the main character's name was Link... Uh, that blew my mind. I did not know that for the five years that I was playing the game before 2006. Yes, I've been playing this game since 2001. I originally grew up with a Nintendo NES and a Sega Genesis 2. Yeah, Sega Genesis 2, not, not that big old fat Sega Genesis that everybody loves and knows. 
I do own a Genesis 1 and a Genesis 2, but I usually play the Genesis 2 more than I do the Genesis 1, only because I actually have the adapters for it. But, you know, it's a bit fun. Uh, one of the main differences with the second quest, though, I might as well get back to this. Uh, the second quest does feature a lot of different changes. There are, are so many different item placements. The enemies haven't really changed so much. There are many different areas where you have to bomb. You can't bomb the same areas that you originally could bomb in the first quest. In fact, I've never actually bothered playing the first quest, so I don't know how different it really is. But I know it's different just from watching Ted's playthrough. Ted, I must question, why did you die a lot? I mean, I know that, I mean, I know that you're not all too good at Zelda, but... Actually, you know, I'm gonna shut up right now on that. Cause, um... Ted's cool peoples. He's not known to be bad at video games. It's just that he doesn't prefer playing Zelda, you know? By the way, I couldn't tell you the names of all these um, enemies. I'd probably have to search up the old guide that I found, like, nine years ago. Yeah, back when dial-up was fun. Oh, does anybody remember that? Oh yeah, by the way, in the original version of this game, it actually said, Let's play money-making game. Yeah, it originally said, Let's play money-making game. Um, the 2003 version that I'm playing obviously has different translations. Um, it, it does come in handy, trust me, you will be needing it if you want to understand certain lines that were said in the original. That's the reason why I'm playing the version that I am playing, you know? But in terms of, um, my history of playing Zelda titles, I honestly do- I honestly don't really have too much fondness of the later titles. I, like, never really got into the 3D titles so much, only because, uh, they became more plot-heavy, and they just... They just didn't attract to me as much as the old titles, because the old titles, they, they have, like, a, some kind of a good feel to them. I don't know what it is, but it's very beneficial. I'm not cutting out these money-making game segments, because, well, I like to make money in this game. <laughs> And you will be needing a lot of rupees for the beginning of the game, especially if you want to be, like, very upgraded. In fact, before I even decided to go to the first dungeon, level 1, I actually bothered getting not just the blue candle, but also the, um, mirror shield. At least that's what, um... At least that's what Bicked Up on a Bus calls it. And if you haven't seen his, um, playthrough of Bicked Up's Adventure, or his or his run of second quest live on I think it was Justin TV I don't remember but if it is then uh, I'll link it in the in, in the description um yeah he calls it as the mirror shield he does not call it the magical shield I I'm sure he has reasons I cannot think of that off the top of my head because I haven't seen his um fully live playthrough not not completely anyways. But yeah, there really isn't much to talk about right here, because I'm just trying to make more money. Money will always be a factor in any Zelda game. Even, like, the later titles, um, Ocarina of Time. Yes, I pronounce it Ocarina, not Ocarina, because of, um, me and translation errors. In fact, I don't even call it Ocarina of Time. I always called it Zelda 64, because that's what it was called in Japan. And, uh, oh, that's bad. <laughs> No, I did not save state, I restarted, but I digress. <laughs> but yeah, um... Zelda 64, money is always a factor for some reason. Zelda 64 2, which is Majora's Mask, uh, it's not really a problem. I never really even bothered playing Majora's Mask, just because of the fact that... I, I don't know, I just found it confusing. The money, the money system in it, though, is not as bad as it is in Zelda 64. That's one of the major fixes that the Zelda 64 team had done for Majora's Mask, and I appreciate that. Bravo, members. Bravo. 
Originally, when I was bothering on playing this game, I actually had anticipated on playing the Search for Link, where you play as Mario, yes, Mario of all characters, instead of Link. Um, I, however, was stupid enough to actually bother doing test runs of it. Trust me, I did a lot of test runs, and it didn't work out as much as I expected it to, because I was doing second quests, and it... What I had noticed was a lot of the placements that were in the original Legend of Zelda were changed in the Search for Link. Meaning that uh, I actually could not do the Search for Link just because of that. It would take me probably like 12 hours just to get the commentary done, let alone the Raws. So I decided, you know, I'm just going to play the original game. That way I don't like uh, have to take more than I have to for playing this title. As you can tell, I'm very highly experienced with playing this title because I mean I've I've been playing this game for how many years now? Like um, like since 2001. Yeah, it's been 11 years. Fun times, you know. Ah, oh, I can't burn the tree. You know, funny enough, uh, the blue candle actually does have this gimmick where you can, in fact, use the blue candle more than once. Uh, when you play, I think it's when you play with Game Genie and Pro Action Replay. Yeah, before you guys had your Game Shark and your Code Breakers, we had Game Genie and Code Action Replay. We're better than you folks in terms of cheat codes. <laughs> When we had Game Genie and Pro Action Replay, I think for a fact that uh, there is in fact a code that allows you to use the magic, uh, magical, magical fire. What? By the way, this fairy will max out your health if your health is lower, just under maximum. Nevertheless, uh, yeah, I believe there was a code where you can actually ha use the blue candle infinitely. But for a long time, you're gonna notice that I won't be having the red candle until I like bother completing this game and the Raws, you know? <laughs> I think I get it like halfway through, but again, I, I can't be too sure at this moment. You know, I actually find that kind of funny. Uh, apparently when Link- oh crap, why did I just do that? Uh, apparently when Link uh, walks from screen to screen, his walking animation uh, actually goes in a play. Like, what was the concept of that? Why? What was the concept of even bothering to, like, um, walk while the screen is moving and you can't move at all? It's as if you're walking in place, Link. Get your facts straight. Get your movement straight. Get your... F actually, get your physics straight. That, that, that makes better sense. That makes be It makes better sense to say, get your physics straight, Link. But, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't think of too much to say at the moment. I, I know I'm a commentator, but hey, when you're a guy that's doing the commentary at 4.07 a.m. in the morning, you sometimes lose track of what you want to say, you know? It gets a bit annoying, I know, it's saddening. I don't like having little to no commentary to mention, but... Yeah. <sighs> Stop trying to burn wildlife, Link. <laughs> and uh, that was actually an awesome entry into a doorway. He just entered sideways. That is amazing. Link, how do you do how did you do that? Okay, Link, why are you trying to hump the wall? <laughs> do not try to hump the wall, Link. It won't have sex with you. And don't even try doing that to the ocean. Sort of, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! the Abridged style. Do not think of doing that. It will not help. <laughs> you know, I just started to notice, like, I'm taking a look at the color scheme, and I... What did I do? What did I do when I was working on, um, creating the rods for this title? Did I mess up on the Raz somewhere along the way? Like, what did I do? Did I do something out of the ordinary? Um, yes, I actually did do something out of the ordinary. What I'm noticing here is I actually have it set to my personal color scheme. 
so the rubies that you're seeing here that are that are supposed to be blue um the, the blue ones are actually pink i just wanted to clarify that because uh color schemes are actually something that not a lot of people tend to notice on a normal basis i know that like a lot of my friends that know stuff about the technical business they tend to they tend to complain a lot about how the color scheme is on any tv personally i prefer it this way so if you have troubles with it then um get your own tv and set it to the settings that you like but whatever you do if i'm around you have it set to 16 to 9 widescreen okay I don't like not watching things in 16 to 9, you know? I also don't like li well, I, don't, I also don't like watching things without bass enhancement. That's another thing you need to know about me when playing a game or watching a movie or anything on a widescreen TV. You've got HD equipped. Use it to your best extent. And, oh crap, my video froze. Where are we? Okay, 16.05. 6. 7. Alright. <laughs> I don't know why I'm in, I don't know why I'm insisting on killing these enemies, especially when I have 255 coins, rupees, whatever the duck they are. <laughs> but yeah, I honestly don't have any reason to bother getting these items at the moment. What I'm actually doing right now is I'm actually going out of my way to get a heart piece, which trust me, I don't need. I honestly don't need this heart piece that I'm trying to get. Hmm. Boo? Is that Boo from Mario World? No, it's not Boo, but I'm pretty sure that that ghost animation is probably what inspired the creation of the Boo character. Also, um, something I actually just recently found out while messing around with Second Quest lately, at, at least. What I've been noticing is if you bother, like, touching all the tombstones, um, well, except the one that you can, in fact, push with a special item that I'll be getting, I apparently noticed that you can actually have more than 10 enemies on screen. I mean, not more than 10 enemies, more than 20. And for some reason, it doesn't, like, it'll give you flicker, but, like, the engine of the game will not like freeze or anything I, i'm actually baffled for an 8-bit game that's actually pretty decent for an 8-bit game of all things also i have a question what what am i going out of my way to find here because i honestly do not remember at this point like i would I, you would think i would remember what item i'm trying to get here as link but nope my memory shot i can't remember a thing no, I'm not suffering from amnesia or Alzheimer's or anything of the sort. I'm just trying to... Link, stop pushing the walls. Stop trying to hump the walls. Or the rocks or whatever the duck they're called. Please, Link. Okay, thank you. I'm figuring Link is trying to um, take advantage... Well, put to his advantage that condom that Brennelfloss gave him. I think that's what he's trying to do here. But hey, that's explanatory. Okay, I just got an accessory that allows me to push stronger walls. Which, I don't remember what exactly it's called. I think it's called the, um... The Strength Ring or something. Uh, I'll probably look that back up in the... In the uh, opening of the Raw, since the opening of the Raw has the list of items already set there. I don't remember if it had the, um, key items, but... I'll check. Because, you know, I like to check stuff. I like to observe things. Not everything, but, you know. Observing is good stuff. Well, obviously, if you give me a heart piece, I'm obviously going to take the heart piece. Why would I take the red potion? I don't ever need the red potion for this game. I'm trying to beat this game with as little damage as possible. Do you honestly think that I would bother trying to um, go through this game and try to take my way out of getting, what is it, a red potion? 
I want to complete this game with 16 hearts, you know. I'm trying to do a 100% run. <laughs> there is no reason to go through this game and not bother getting the... Whatever the duck you call it. <laughs> Red potion. Red potions are... Pr Red potions are pretty much useless. Because I noticed, like, even if you heal yourself with a blue potion, like, anywhere in this game, if you use a blue potion, it'll... At least in Ted's version, it'll max out your health. I don't know what was up with that, but it does for some reason max out your health. Don't ask me why, it just does. And it is a bit confusing. For some reason, I actually bother getting the arrow here. I don't know why. I don't have the bow yet. And you can't use the arrows without the bow. One of the other problems about this game, too, is that with the bow, you cannot use um, the bow if you don't have any rupees. You know, that's actually pretty stupid. That was actually pretty stupid on Nintendo's part. Like, what were they thinking when they made this concept? I mean, okay, I understand. You want us to spend money to get a weapon that helps us lose money, but do you honestly have to have it being like one rupee at a time? Seriously? Also, I think I just found the entrance to level 9. No, not really, not really, I'm just joking around. I don't think level 9's here in this version. I tried bombing everything and it doesn't work. So I don't figure it does. In Zelda Classic Quest, which is actually what I'm more familiar with using, uh, thanks to playing Big Dip's Adventure and um, Rockman World, Dr. Wily's Revenge Director's Cut, uh, I think that's what it's called? No, it's called Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge Director's Cut. Even though I could call it Rockman World Director's Cut if there was a Japanese translation, but sadly there's not. Yay. And Link was about to die from falling rocks. Nay. <laughs> but yeah, um, Delta Classic Quest. In that game it had super bombs. Super bombs are red bombs that you can use to pretty much destroy special parts of the stage that can not be destroyed with normal bombs, and this is where apparently you can get the Master Sword. What do you mean, Master using it and you can have this? Yeah, if you have the wooden sword, you obviously can't use it. Yeah, burn him. Burn him to hell. <laughs> no, not really, not really. <laughs> But yeah, the super bombs, they helped you explode specific regions, and I don't know what was that concept. By the way, if you are wondering how I went to that screen, uh, apparently on controller 2, I think if you hold up an A and then press the start button, or some fish, I'd have to probably check that later on. I, uh, I was actually looking at that through a guide as to how to do that. I don't remember exactly at the moment, I'll go back to it later. But originally when I was doing that, I had pretty much, uh, did not know that I could reset the game that way. But it is good for people like me who want to, like, get through this game and have it done and over with. It's pretty enjoyable, you know? And why was I burning the wall here? Oh, right, to get money. Money that I won't be needing for another part or so. God, I use a lot of money in this game. You know, um, fun fact about me, I am a Scorpio, and I don't usually use a lot of money. Yeah, that's something that we Scorpios don't really, uh, bother doing. Like, like, we usually end up getting, like, this big amount of money, like, regardless of amount, it's usually big to us, because we don't usually get it on a normal basis. But when it comes to me, uh, I always have, like, all this money that I don't tend on blowing it, I, like, bother saving it for no obvious reason. It's like whenever I have something that I actually want to get, it's as if I actually want to save my money for that. But, you know, I, I just find it funny. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I have $15 in pennies. That's how rich I somewhat am. If, I'm, if I have 1,500 pennies in my room in like some kind of container where I hold my, all my pennies, yes, pennies and no nickels, dimes, or quarters, or um, gold U.S. dollars, which I have, I think, four of, but whatever. Uh, yeah, that's, 
you can pretty much tell that I am a money collector. And you know, all a good majority of those pennies that I've been finding, those are pennies that have been laying down on the floor, like out of nowhere. I've just bought it like saying like, you know what? I'm gonna need all the luck I can get. I usually get pennies for good luck actually. I don't usually get them to try to purchase to try to purchase anything with them. I usually keep them for collecting because I like to collect old time pennies. I'm still waiting for that day that I get the kissing Lincolns. Oh. If you wonder where the kissing Lincolns um, was originally, uh, well, if you're wondering where I'm getting that reference, uh, kissing Lincolns was actually something that was found, like I saw that on The Simpsons and I'm figuring it is a real penny. I'll, uh, you know what, let me rock the wiki right now. Yes, I'm gonna rock the wiki to find out. <laughs> yes, me rocking the wiki on at 4.20 in the morning during a Legend of Zelda commentary. Oh, oh god, I got hit. I actually got hit. <laughs> but no, I'm resetting the game. <laughs> again and again and again and again and again, because I hate, I hate getting damaged. I don't like, I don't like taking damage in Zelda only because it can even like having that special power to destroy enemies with laser beams. Or what? Actually no, they're not even laser beams. They're just radiant glows of sword animation that attack the enemy. Nevertheless, we're gonna fight the unicorn dragon. You know? This boss is pathetic. No, really, very pathetic. And when you have the mirror shield, it makes life that much easier. Well, at least I'm going to be getting the special um, white sword later on, but you won't be able to see that until part two. So, um, as I'm going through this, I'm going to keep looking and trying to find the kissing Lincoln's penny. Ah, oh, come on. Wait a minute. All About Lisa was the season finale for season 19 of The Simpsons? Okay, I did not know that. No, literally, I did not know that. Ugh. So, again, trying to find this kissing Lincoln's penny, and I cannot for the life of me find it. Ugh. Come on. Come on, Wikipedia, help me out here. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, IGN would give this episode a very odd review. I don't like, I don't like people having mixed feelings about TV shows, you know, uh, it just does not, it just doesn't really apply to me well, I don't like it. But yeah, it, it doesn't really say anything about the Kissing Lincoln's Penny except that it's just in the episode. If the at, if there really is a 1917 link uh, kissing Lincoln's penny, I definitely would love to see that. You know, I'm actually gonna ch take a look at Google just to, to see if that's right or not. <laughs> and again, the reason why I'm doing this in the comms section is just so I can just like have some kind of random action while while having a game going on. Oh God, the game's not even playing anymore. <laughs> The game is not even playing anymore, and how many minutes have I gone into this? 29 minutes and 5, 6, 7, 8, but whatever. That's more audio from me that you get to hear, you know? It's interesting. It's interesting when you get to, holy crap, the, there actually is a Kissing Lincoln's Penny. <laughs> Amazing. Yep, it's real. It is real. I actually would love to get my hands on it one day. I might one day, but I don't know if I ever will. But that would definitely be good to have in my penny collection, 
you know what? I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. I'm going to keep walking around these streets searching for pennies, and hopefully one day I find that rare kissing Lincoln's penny right in the grasp of my hands. <laughs> but that's about it for this 30 plus minute commentary. Caitlin, I hope your birthday is going well, and I shall be seeing you whenever I see you. I don't know when I'll see you, but, you know, uh, stop on by my house if you're, if you're in the town. Yeah? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed me going on this random tangent and playing a bit of Zelda for you. <laughs> And I shall see you for part two whenever I upload it. See you then.